Good morning. Merry Resurrection, everybody. It's like, well, it's like Merry Christmas, except better, okay? Merry Resurrection. Uh, it's great to have you with us here. Welcome home to the United Methodist Church of Westchester. I'm Truman Brooks, the senior pastor. If you're online with us today, great to have you with us. Please make sure that you sign in the guest registry, either at umcwc.org or using the QR code that's provided. Um, make comments on the YouTube section. Let us know that you've been with us. We're all one church together, and we thank you for joining us for that. I have a couple of brief announcements, but I just want to ask everybody here, how many of you got a text message from me this week saying that, uh, holy cow, I discreetly asked you to do something? I am not a discreet person. <laughs> if I ever use the word discreet and say, hi, this is Reverend Truman Brooks, that's not me. And uh, if anybody has a brilliant idea how to keep people from phishing now using my text or email, let me know after the service, because I don't think there's any good way to do it. But anyway, realize I will never ask you for anything like that. That's just kind of silly. Now, today we welcome our guest musicians here to help lead us in worship. Thank you so much for sharing your talents with us today. And after today, oh, there you go. They haven't even heard you yet, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta be up there to, to earn that, you know, whatever. Um, after today, you're no longer strangers, you're friends with us, so thanks for coming. Uh, following the service, we have some Easter bread available from last week. It's all good stuff, and it helps support the missions through United, uh, United Women in Faith. Uh, a huge thank you to Amanda Fenn and Emily Garbanus for decorating the front of the church with all these flowers this morning, and thank you to all of you who provided those as well. Remember, following the service, Take them home. Whatever you brought with you or whatever you donated, you can take it with you, and that would be good too. And a huge thank you to Deacon Alan Keller because he actually, every year, what a servant's heart he has. Every year, he loads up about 100 chairs and takes them out to our sunrise service in the back of his trailer and then brings them all back in deposits. So thank you so much, Alan. Thank you again for doing that. It was a fun sunrise service, and it was great to be a part of it. Now, following the service, you're welcome. Any of you that are here with your families, but it can be anybody, actually. If you go upstairs to the Fiesta Center, in the back of the room, we have a backdrop that is really nice for doing an Easter picture. So go right on up there. Take a nice Easter shot. Uh, people will take shots for you. I'm sure that's no problem. And uh, basically, then take a look at the layout for the Worship Cafe, which we offer every Sunday at 11 o'clock. It really is a nice layout. Maybe you'll come back and go to that service as well. Uh, again, thanks to everybody who helped with the sunrise service this morning at 6.30 a.m. If I fall asleep during my own sermon, you'll know why, okay? I was there too. So let's prepare to worship the resurrected Christ together in spirit and in truth. Will you please rise? Whom do you seek at the sepulcher, O followers of Christ? Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he foretold. Go tell the other disciples, he goes before you into Galilee. The Lord is risen indeed.
You may be seated. Hallelujah, he is risen. Now let us confess our sins, first starting with the um, going corporately in the prayer of confession and then silently to ourselves. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the tomb, you have given us the sure sign of your power to deliver us from sin and death and to renew our whole creation. We confess that we shall fail on death and fear. We continue to cling to selfish ways and doubt your power to make all things new. Forgive our lack of faith. Have mercy on our weakness. Raise us from the death of sin that we may live with Christ in the joy of his resurrection, now and forever. Amen. God of resurrection, God of promise, God of hope, renew our hearts and minds this day and start us on a new journey of growth in love. Amen. And now one of our favorite parts of the service, why don't we stand and share signs of peace, unity, and resurrection with each other. So our ancient Easter affirmation this morning is, was, is from one of the earliest known liturgies for Easter Sunday. And we actually do this as kind of a, a, a chant back and forth, almost like a cheer back and forth between the choir and the congregation. So say it from the heart, say it with power, say it good and loud. The choir begins. Are you ready? Ready. ready. Christ, Christ is risen. The world below lies desolate. Christ is risen. The spirit of evil are fallen. Christ is risen. The angels of God are rejoicing. Christ is risen. The tombs of the dead are empty. Christ is risen indeed from the dead, the first of the sleepers. Glory and power are his forever and ever. Amen.
Wow. <laughs> and now let us pray for the scriptures to come alive for us this morning. Jesus, we have lived from Palm Sunday celebration, the Last Supper, and persevered through the depths of Good Friday. In the wake of your suffering, we continued to persevere through a day and two long nights. We wonder if our dreams were only vapor. Help us to listen to the scriptures and the message today that we might awaken from the darkness to discover through perseverance, hope, and the power of your sacrificial love for us. Even though things may not be the way we pictured, may we learn that you will perform miracles in order to be with us, just as you promised. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Happy, happy Easter. The first scriptures from Acts 10, 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who fears him and practices righteousness is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to all the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Thanks be to God. Our ushers will be coming through the aisles with our friendship folders. Please take one, fill it out, let us know you are here worshiping with us this morning. Any messages you have for the church, please include them in there. And um, as mentioned before, if you are worshiping with us online, uh, follow the link on the website and let us know the same thing. Let us know you're here with us sharing in the resurrection story this morning. Our message for growing Christians is next, and you, I think you know what's gonna happen because somebody's <laughs> already ready, so thank you. Just follow, please. Mark Osborne is going to share our message, not just for our younger growing Christians, but we are all growing Christians this morning. All right, good morning. Uh, I'm Mr. Osborne, uh, for those of you that don't know me or weren't here last time, uh, and those that were, yes, Hudson, William, I'm still your dad. Uh, um, and wow, guys, you see all these people here? I mean, it's impressive, right? And I mean, I assumed that my last children's message was pretty good, but to draw a crowd like this, this week for this message? Whoa. All right, in fact, I got a lot of positive reviews. A lot of people had a lot of very nice things to say, but my favorite feedback, I, I need to get in character for this one. All right, this person, he goes, do you know what you've done? They're gonna make you do it again. <laughs> Only way out now is to join me and the audiovisual team. Hey, Corey, you were right. I failed to join the team in time, so here I am. Uh, as well, for everyone out there, unsolicited plug, the audio and visual team needs volunteers, and Corey would love you to join. Uh, and I have it on his good authority that uh, he can get you out of having to do children's messages. 
All right. Okay. Enough of that. All right. So last time, for those that were here, right, I tried to go for a great message, right? This week, we're going to change it up. I'm just going to go for a beautiful message, okay? Now, I work for a small airplane company, okay? And we've been in the news a bit lately, so I won't say their name. But I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with glowing, okay? So this morning, I, with your help, I want to discuss the sounds of things that fly, okay? So the first is a jet. Do you guys know what a jet sounds like when it flies? What does it sound like? Yeah, it just roars. So it spreads its wings and it just goes roar. Can you guys roar? Um, okay, uh, they're a bit louder, but that's fine. Okay, the other thing, another thing that flies, helicopters, right? Do you guys know what a helicopter sounds like? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll feed you this one. It goes choppa, 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 choppa. Can you do that? Okay, all right, again, still quiet. Okay, and the last one, right? People. What do people sound like when they fly? Yeah, so this one's actually a trick question, right? Because what about angels, right? Can people be angels? And on Easter, there's an important scripture that we read. and talks about when Mary and Mary were headed to Jesus' tomb, they heard an angel. And the angel said, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus. He is not here. He has risen, right? But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, that was 2,000 years ago, right? A long time. Could I do anything more recent? Yeah. Yeah, I can. And that's what I'm going to do next, right? So I'm going to tell you a story, right? So apologies in advance. It's a little long. Uh, but it's a time that I heard three different angels speak in my life, right? So this time goes back to William wasn't born yet. Hudson was two and a half. And myself and Mrs. Osborne needed to go to the hospital at one in the morning. Right? And that's not a good time to be going to the hospital. Right? So we had two problems. One, Hudson was asleep, so we needed to leave him at the house and have somebody watch him. Right? We're not from this area, so our family couldn't come watch him. And we were also very, very, very worried about the news we might receive at the hospital. So in our time of great need, we turned to God in prayer. And that's when the first angel showed up. Right? So for this, for this first angel, I'm going to start with a fact uh, for all you kids. Um, fact. No parent wants to hear from their child at 1 a.m. I can assure you of this. Hudson, William, if, you ever, if I ever hear you on the monitor saying, Dad, we made you cookies, and it's one in the morning, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to roll over to your mom and say, I think it's your turn. Uh, <laughs> so when I texted my mom, which is Hudson and William's nanny, right, that Abby and I were headed to the hospital at 1 AM, she knew it wasn't good. But in the depth of our need, you know what she said? She said, I'll be in prayer. And that's the thing with angels. When we are at a loss for words or filled with nothing but tears, they'll be your voice because angels have beautiful voices. And then when we got home, we met with the second angel. So in order to leave for the hospital at 1 a.m., we reached out to another mo mother to have her watch Hudson. And it just so happens we have one that lives directly across the street. And like any parent getting a call at 1 a.m., she instantly recognized the depth of our need as well and agreed to watch Hudson. And that mom is Ann Holton. And she sits right up there in the choir every week. And she stayed with Hudson from 1 to 4 that morning. And when we got home from the hospital, exhausted and still worried about the future, you know what she said when we thanked her? She said, it was nothing. Well, Anne, your presence that night meant everything to us. On a night when we desperately needed good news, you were that good news. And that's the thing with angels. When we need grace the most, they're there waiting to shelter us in their warm embrace. Angels love with amazing grace. Now for the third angel. So because we had made it home from the hospital, the path ahead was still fraught with uncertainty, right? And that's when the third angel showed up. On a Sunday, just like today, I was headed across the street with an angel to get coffee from the cupcake shop, right? And that angel is Pete Rosé, <laughs> right? As we walked, Pete sensed my worry, and I broke down and told him everything that was happening. And you know what he said? Yeah, I didn't think he would. He said, <laughs> we'll get through this together. And that's the thing with angels. When your load is heavy and too much to carry alone, angels will lift you with their wings because angels soar, right? Now, actually, those were the only three angels that I heard, right? But there was going to be a fourth angel involved. And now for a crucial element of the story you're likely wondering about, right? Why did we need to go to the hospital in the middle of the night? Well, Mrs. Osborne needed something called an emergency ultrasound. 
which means we needed to have pictures taken of her belly. And because it was the middle of the night, the doctor wasn't there. We had to wait for the doctor to wake up and come to the hospital. Now, question for you guys. Who, who's scared of thunderstorms? Raise your hand. Really, Hudson? Raise it. <laughs> Not a lot of honesty this morning. All right. But, I'm, yeah. but I am also afraid of thunderstorms. But you know what? Sometimes in life, it can be just as scary, if not scarier, when things are still and quiet. And that's what happened that night. As we waited in the dark and stillness and quiet for the doctor to arrive, in constant prayer for good news, we felt alone and very scared. And when the doctor arrived, she quickly took the pictures and said three amazing words. Your baby's fine. And in that moment, Abby and I wept with joy. But then the doctor asked us a question. Would you like to know if it's a boy or a girl? And with tears in our eyes, we said yes. And she responded with a smile. It's a boy. And that's the last thing I heard in the room that night, but it wasn't the last person to speak. The last person to speak was an angel, and it spoke to Mrs. Osborne's heart, saying four simple words. His name is William. Now, for today, this critical message is, as personal as that story was, and these angels are to me and my family, each of us has the opportunity this very day to be angels. So I'm going to read a poem, and then we'll close in prayer. So this poem is called, What If I Fall? by Erin Hansen. She says, there is freedom waiting for you on the breezes of the sky. And you ask, what if I fall? Oh, but my darlings, what if you fly? All right, let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for the angels among us, for their beautiful voices, for their amazing grace, and like them, may we be unafraid to spread our wings and soar. Amen. That is hard to follow. <laughs> but it's always appropriate to follow with God's word. Our second reading is John 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? 
Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. Oh my goodness, what a happy, upbeat Easter morning, you know? Um, lots of friends around us, old and new, amazing music, just a feeling in the air that at this moment, all can be right with the world. Easter's always feel this way to me. Puts a smile on my face. But we all need to remember that that first Easter Sunday morning was not like this at all. No great music, no great songs of victory. That first Easter morning didn't begin with a sunrise service. It began with fear, with fear. At least that's the way John tells it. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, it was a moment of darkness in Mary's life and the life of the disciples, darkness confusion and fear. The Romans had won. The Pharisees and scribes had laughed. And Jesus had been beaten and humiliated and killed. He would not be the king of a new rising Israel. And now his tomb had been reopened. It's not that Easter begins with a wild panic. No, it wasn't exactly like that. Easter begins with the kind of fear that feels a lot like heartbreak. Is that kind of feeling you get when you get that phone call right before you go to bed from your sister or your brother and they say, are you sitting down? That kind of fear. Easter begins with darkness and confusion and fear. That's why the Easter message resonates so much with us this morning. After all, these are some of the most frightening dark days that I've lived through. Maybe this is the same for you, too. Our young people are scared to death that they can't pay their bills with the money they make and that maybe they'll never be able to buy a house for themselves. Everyone is wondering where the economy is heading. How many more days can we live with, with the inflation that's been eating away at us? Anyone here worried about the election this fall? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Me, too. Me, too. Anyone worried about the environment? 
me too, for that too, okay? And we're worried about Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and Russia. And we're worried about China. There are so many real fears in our lives that it's amazing that any one of us got up this morning and crawled out of bed, except that we needed to be here. We needed to be reminded of the promise of Easter. We needed to be refreshed and renewed and revived and re-energized. In a world of Good Friday nightmares, it's time for Easter dreams. After the completion of Disney World, okay, someone remarked, isn't it too bad that Walt Disney didn't live to see all of this? Because right? he had died before it was all completed. And Mike Vance, the creative director of Disney Studios, replied, he did see it. That's why it's here. Everything that we hold or eat or watch or wear or sit on or listen to, in other words, everything that has been created by human ingenuity started out as a dream. Before anything can become tangible, it must first become a reality in the mind of a dreamer. Only when the dream is real for one can it begin to become real for all. Not until the dream is real for me can it become real for you. It's time for Easter dreams to come real for you so that you can handle all of the nightmares of the days to come. Now, it was the third day after Jesus had been brutally beaten and hung on the cross. His death left the disciples with so much guilt. The death of a loved one always leaves us with guilt. They regretted abandoning him in his moments of deepest need. They wished they had tried harder to fight the Romans, to find a way to rescue Jesus. There were moments when they wished that they had the courage to die along with him. It wasn't right that their master was taken in such a horrible fashion and they were left behind. For Mary Magdalene, it was still yesterday as she went to visit the grave of her master. She still walked in darkness. She still thought of death as being fearful and uncertain and ambiguous when her living in yesterday was suddenly interrupted by a moved stone and an empty tomb. Jesus' body was gone. All that was left were the clothes that he was wearing. What were Jesus' followers going to do now? as a new uncertain day was beginning to dawn, a day when they couldn't even go back to sit at their master's grave to rest in his warm memory. What they did was they started running. They started running. Mary ran to tell the others. Peter and John ran. They seemed to have a foot race to get back to the tomb themselves. They would walk back home pondering all that they had seen and heard, trying to make sense of it. All they knew for sure was that something had changed, something profound, something large, Something huge has happened in their lives. The tomb was empty. But all those teachings of Jesus started rushing in to fill it. Jesus talked of tearing down the temple and rebuilding it in three days. Is that what he meant? Or he talked of going to prepare a place for us. Jesus said he was the resurrection and the life. Now that makes sense. Jesus said his kingdom is not of this world, yet it is very near. What I love about the good news of Easter is that it's real. It's, it's flesh and blood. It's God's love embodied for us. I think that the details of the angels working um, to push that stone away that you find in another gospel, and the disciples running, and Jesus being known in the physical breaking of the bread, and the physical touch of Thomas reaching out his hands and side, these are crucial to understanding what God is trying to do in our lives and in our church and in our world. God is trying to physically build the kingdom of God here on earth, one follower at a time. All it takes is two or three average folks to get a taste of the hope that this resurrection brings, and they can go out and change the world, feed the hungry, work for justice, bring peace, live out that part of the Lord's prayer that says, thy kingdom come. And that's what the church has been doing ever since. I always thought this would be a great Sunday to host a 5K. We did all those 5Ks. I could never get Molly D to do them on an Easter Sunday morning, but this is when it should be because it fits with this gospel lesson. There's something about working out that clears your mind and that relieves stress and that lifts your mood, and that helps you to um, change the way you see things. Working out your body is a part of that process of nurturing your soul. After Mary had her morning run to go get Peter and John, Mary would just sit. She would kind of open up and cry a little bit more. Her grief over the loss of Jesus was overwhelming. 
She was almost inconsolable until an angel sat beside her and held a little support group meeting with her. I love the therapeutic question right off the bat. Do you know why you're crying, Mary? That's a therapy question right there. Good counselor, angel. Because Jesus is gone. I don't think I'll ever be near him again. Mary voices her hopelessness, and, and you can see her physically shaking as she cries out her questions to the angel. If you carried him away, where have you laid him? And in the midst of her tears and of her feeling alone and her vulnerability and her helplessness, she hears her name. And she knows Jesus is there. The resurrection, the new life, found Mary. Death no longer had the power to make every day like yesterday. In the middle of her Good Friday nightmare, Mary was given an Easter dream. She could dream of a whole new future with her teacher, her master, her Lord, her good friend. A good future. One that's not filled with anguish. Now, holidays like Christmas and Easter... They're melancholy holidays for many of us, especially as you get a little bit older, okay? Because we look around at our family gatherings and we notice that there are loved ones who we dearly love who are, are missing and they'll never gather around us again to eat the ham and to share stories. We look at faces in the church and we see some of our old dear saints missing and lots of new people that we love to get to know. Our children maybe don't look so much like children anymore. This mortal life is filled with loss and with change, and with decay. And we would do nothing but spend our lives mourning those losses, those yesterdays, if it was not for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus was dead. Hundreds saw him die. Jesus walked the earth once more. Hundreds saw him alive after his resurrection. This was a defining moment for all of creation. Death would no longer be the final word. We would know for sure there was more life to come. The resurrection is true, and it's real, and it is hard to believe. It takes some theological heavy lifting to accept it. It's a workout for your faith. For those of you who came this morning to hear some wonderful music, and maybe you're skeptical about this thing called the resurrection, good for you. I love skeptical peace, people. My middle name is Thomas. I share the same heart with you, okay? Don't believe everything that somebody tells you, okay? And don't say you believe when you really don't, okay? Be honest, don't fake it. Ask questions, explore. Do whatever you need to do to make sense of this, this teaching of the rising of Jesus held by over two billion Christians around the world today. But realize this, John couldn't make sense of it either. Mary, she didn't even try to make sense of it. The early disciples didn't believe because they could explain exactly how this was possible for Jesus to raise from the dead. They believed because they experienced the resurrection. They experienced his new life. And it touched them so profoundly that none of them would ever recant what they saw and what they believed. They never changed their story, even though all of them would be killed for preaching this gospel of the resurrection. Good Fridays would still come in the lives of each one of these disciples. They would all be martyred for their faith. They would die painfully because of the profession of Jesus Christ. And after the joy that you find here this morning, you'll go home and maybe your life will still be a bit of a train wreck. And certainly all of us have so many troubles and transitions hanging over our heads. But because Christ is alive, we can have peace. We can have strength. We can have a future in which we know that evil will lose. Death is no more. Justice comes to pass, and for all eternity, life will be good. Martin Luther King used to tell the story of a woman named Sister Pollard, that's how he called her, a 75-year-old African-American woman who lived in Montgomery, Alabama, during the now famous bus boycott. One day after walking long distances back and forth to her job for months, Sister Pollard was asked if she wanted a ride. And she answered, no. The person said back to her, aren't you tired? And she responded, my feet are tired, but my soul is rested. Keep fighting the good fight, church. These are tough days to be a Christian. Don't let your fears keep you from doing what is right, doing the loving thing towards God and towards your neighbor. Your feet will get tired, but your soul is going to find rest. 
This is, a good, this is the good news we celebrate this Easter morning. There is no tragedy God cannot redeem. No dream, even the elusive dream of peace on earth, that the God who raised Jesus from the dead cannot energize and advance. No shame that you need to cling on to forever. Jesus can bear the burden with you uh, until your journey with shame is gone. No darkness that you cannot survive. No loneliness that God cannot care for by simply saying your name and speaking to your heart. Don't be afraid, church, of anything. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Holy God, we marvel at the mystery of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. We are awed by his obedience, astonished by the depth of his love for us, and amazed by the display of your power over the forces of sin and death you are truly a God of wonders. You restore with that which has been lost. You bring new life from that which is old. You create beauty from sin and ugliness. You offer healing and hope where there appears to be only sickness and death. Weave your resurrection power throughout our lives, O oh God. Restore us, heal us, create beauty within us and among us, and bring new life here to these people to our loved ones, to our neighbors, and even to our enemies, whom we name in our hearts before you in silent prayer. May your miraculous redeeming power continue to work in their lives, in our lives, and in our world. Set our hearts aflame and open all of our eyes that we may recognize your presence in every person and every situation and in every place. Amen. Let us continue in prayer this morning. God of the rising sun, God of darkness banished, we praise and worship you. For empty tombs, thank you. For the disciples running with good news, thank you for your presence alive, powerful, resurrected, thank you. We celebrate your victory over death, over all the powers that would defeat us. Help us to understand resurrection power, to see its force at work in our world, overturning evil empires, changing the hatred within us, moving the world slowly, forcefully, bending us toward love, truth, and justice. Today, we think of all who are grieving in this lonely world. We remember the sick and dying. We pray for places in the world that are torn by war, bloodshed, and deep division. Hope of the world amidst all the broken hopes and dreams around us, let us see a glimpse of your kingdom. Show us healing and love, peace and justice where it has not been before. Empower your church to be your ambassadors until Jesus comes again and reigns forever and ever. Until that day, we faithfully pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have several announcements I'd like to bring forward this morning, just kind of briefly. And actually, the first one is uh, by our youth minister, Corey Smith. He told me that he'd be doing the announcements from the balcony. Is that true? Uh, it is true, uh, but I also there? thought that we were going to do the offering. What? I thought we were going to do the offering first. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on to your announcement, Corey. Hold on. All right. We'll, okay, we'll wait. You. See that? These big services always scare me, and I get something wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> 
So anyway, we are going to receive our offering. And for those of you at home, we invite you to give electronically. Uh, all of your gifts go to help our church serve a broken world and honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you for giving generously. While we receive our offering, we have an offering video that basically shows the celebration of Easter among United Methodist churches all around the globe, uh, specifically in Africa for a lot of the images you'll see. And for our ushers, uh, just to let you know, I know it's kind of a high holy Uh, Merce and, and Alan will be waiting for you. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of the light of God. We are marching. Is it the right time, Corey? We got it? Ah. All right. Yes. Excellent. OK. All right. Hello. How's everybody doing? Now you might see I've got something. I'm wearing something very uh, cool right here. These are, Jake, if you can zoom in a little bit. Let's see if you can do it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. See these? These are medals, kids. Now, I haven't won, any, won these medals. These medals are up for grabs. These are the medals that your team can win at Trivia Night. This coming, yes, that's right. This coming Saturday, April 6th, we're having a Trivia Night. It is going to be the most fun event of the year. Uh, there, we're going to have questions that are uh, geared towards ages 8 to 108. 
Mm. It's a multi-generational event, and it is a team event. So if you want to put together a team that you think could take home, take home the gold, right here, uh, you should do that. And even if you aren't good at trivia, you should also play because it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, this is a, our final fundraiser for our youth mission trip to uh, South Dakota uh, this, that's going to happen this summer. And um, in addition to the trivia night, there's going to be a dessert bar that is included in the price. $25 is how much it costs per person. And there's also going to be a small silent auction there. So it's going to be a ton of fun. You can register today out in the uh, gathering area. There's going to be a, you can look for the trivia night sign and there's a little table there. Or you can register online, umcwc.org, anytime, but please register by Friday. If you don't have a team, you will just be randomly assigned to a team, so no problem. But you could make a team with your Sunday school class, or the choir, or your friends, or your family. Invite some friends that don't come to this church. It's going to be so much fun. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Corey. Okay. Oh, look, they're clapping for your announcement. Hey, you don't clap for my announcements. What are you doing? Okay. That's fine. I'll get through mine faster than that, too. That's fine. Um, Children's Sunday is coming up the first Sunday in May, so if you want your child to be a part of it, see Kelly, and we'll make sure that they have a role in Children's Sunday, where we'll have one service at 10 a.m. and a continental breakfast beforehand by our chef, Tony, which is awesome. Um, we do have a 5K coming up to support Camp Inaba. Now, during the sermon, I mentioned about jogging and running and how good it is for you. I preach about it. I don't do it. But... <laughs> be honest, you know. Um, but if you are a runner, why don't you sign up? It's really fun. Run through the woods along the French Creek there, and uh, it supports a good cause, Camp Inaba. Starting next week, we have a new sermon series called Rising uh, Strong. Stories about redemption and change and hope in the Bible. Hope you can come back and be a part of that. Wednesday night, Wednesday night out, starts back up this Wednesday night. A wonderful meal and fellowship time. Uh, just come back at 6 o'clock on Wednesday night and you'll enjoy the night, I promise. And we do have a new members class that will start up this spring. Let us know if you'd like to be a part of it. Um, let's stand and sing our closing hymn. And you see the words are actually on the back of the bulletin for this. Christ is alive.
Christ is risen and he goes before us into this world, world of fear and pain. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Step out in humble confidence. There is nothing about to happen that God has not foreseen and no situation where Christ will not be there ahead of you. He has called us to share the good news and transform the world. What a journey is before us. Go in peace and feel the power of the risen Lord with you, now and forever. Amen. Amen.